Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night, about 9.52 p.m. California time here. December 27, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.7 around the Puerto Rico area. Uh, quite a bit of movement ramping up here throughout the uh, afternoon and evening time period here with an obvious major adjustment going on here across the western area of the Pacific Plate and just down here across the uh, southwestern edge of the uh, Filipino Plate. Quite a bit of activity, including that large 6.8 earthquake striking out there earlier this morning in the Kuril Kamchatka Trench. Now, since then, we've had a number of earthquakes there following that 6.8, putting the pressure out here against the uh, western areas here of the, of the region. Uh, quite a few fours if you look here on the board following that 6.8. So all that pressure migration seems to have impacted uh, uh, this area specifically quite uh, heavily. Quite a few fours. The latest one, a 4.6 up here along the Izu Trench, but pretty shallow. Still watching potential further mega quake activity here across this uh, subduction zone, the Kumano Ridge. Uh, I'm sure that's putting a strain on this area, although we're not seeing any uh, earthquake activity right now. Uh, it just makes sense here uh, from all this movement recently today that uh, to keep an eye on that. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Aleutian Trench here. A couple earthquakes in the last couple hours. A three-pointer and a four-pointer scattered out and about here across the length of the Aleutian Trench. Pretty uh, lengthy subduction zone. A couple earthquakes out there today. I mean, it's highly notable on the uh, map where everything's starting to move at. As uh, far as California, we did see a number of earthquakes over here across Northern California as well with the latest of 2.6. A couple of threes in there as well, 3.9, 3.1, 3.4. Uh, the majority of it back over here where that seven-pointer struck here a few weeks back now. But uh, one earthquake uh, somewhat there at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. I'll give a quick glance here at the trimmer map. Nothing going on for Cascadia trimmer. Pacific Northwest relatively quiet. The Bay Area south there along the San Andreas Fault. Uh, a, no a number of earthquakes this morning, mostly twos and some ones. Nothing major going on here across the area for now up north. Uh, down in Southern California, uh, they were looking at uh, a little bit of swarming here this morning around the Holtville area, El Centro. I was looking on the satellite imagery here. I don't see any type of, uh, you know, fracking operations or, you know, pumping operations, anything of that nature down there. Um, so more than likely, this is just strain being produced. An earthquake activity here at the Imperial Fault, which is, you know, responsible for some large earthquakes there in the past. One earthquake a little bit further up north here along the Brawley Seismic Zone, but we're not noticing anything of any elevated activity there across Southern California for now. Aside from that movement this morning on the um, Imperial Fault down there in the Imperial Valley. Western Nevada still seeing a little bit of earthquake activity in the typical zones out here. This has been a hot spot of earthquake activity here recently. In the last uh, few months or so, still seeing some activity ap aftershock movement here following that 5.7 earthquake a few weeks back here outside the Yerington region of Nevada. Quite a few ones and twos in there. Uh, throughout the rest of the uh, states here, Yellowstone pretty quiet. Nothing showing up there. But I do want to double check that. As always, there's that. Uh, I don't see anything local, but I do see that 6.8 there from this morning quite nicely. That's the uh, signature from that large earthquake around the Curl Camp Chatka Trench this morning. But aside from local earthquake. Uh, that distant earthquake, there's really no localized earthquake activity to note. Out around the oil fields here of Texas, um, ramping up with some earthquakes. New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. The eastern portion of the country, quiet as well. One one lonesome earthquake up here in the Canada, 1.9 from, actually it looks like it's from last night. A little odd. Uh, a little bit of uh, earthquake activity out in these fracture zones here, the southern mid-Atlantic ridge. Seen a pair of five pointers out here. One, uh, one this afternoon or early afternoon or late afternoon, excuse me. <laughs> I could call that early evening. Uh, and then one here just uh, within the last hour. Now, if I recall, let's see here. Our last 
earthquake out here in the Atlantic was a 5.9 yesterday. So that was a little bit further up north today. Got that activity further down south here. So it's looking a little bit more active out here in this region than uh, we've seen recently. That should put the strain out here on all the plates. So we'll keep an eye on that. Across Puerto Rico, there's a little bit of movement out there. Some threes, including a four-pointer out there from uh, earlier this evening, late afternoon time period, local time. This could be California time here, my time. Uh, aside from that, nothing big going on, but of course it does have some potential out there. This could be another area where we could see the eight-pointer that we're expecting uh, take place. There's a number of spots out here. Uh, New Zealand, a handful of earthquakes in the uh, three range, it looks like. The latest, a 3.5 South Island area. Nothing big happening there for now. Just uh, quite the active scenario out here, though, on the globe. All up and down this region. Um, there is, let's see here, where's these two earth three earthquakes that are missing? Those are gone, so I'm guessing this time may be off here a little bit. I guess it is. So technically, this is what it would look like in the last 24 hours. That's a lot of activity up here across this region. Because you got to account for these earthquakes early this morning, about 1, 2 in the morning. Some deep activity, including that uh, 4.3 in the uh, Mariana Islands yesterday. 377 miles deep there into that uh, subduction zone. So a lot of movement happening out there. And that's when some big things can take place. Areas not seeing any elevated activity following all this movement is this section right here. So uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Definitely got to be under the strain um, in that region. Big Island of Hawaii, they have returned here. At least Kilauea Volcano has returned to an eruption status with uh, some vigorous fountaining observed earlier this evening across that area of the Kilauea Volcano up at the summit area. Um, after a little pause, let's see here, there's a latest image, still getting a little bit of, of uh, lava flow there into the lava lake, there's a hot spot thermal image, and uh, this is their webcam they have on YouTube, I believe, well that's a still image, but they do have a webcam up there on YouTube somewhere, uh, so yeah, things are, uh, Look like they returned there to the eruption stage following a little bit of quietness, but uh, obviously we've seen that inflation going up here on the def deformation data uh, leading us to believe here that things were about ready to kick back up again. So as you can see, this is uh looks like it's current here. There's the last two days. Notice the inflation coming back up from the last eruption there. There's the last two short-lived eruptions uh, go gone back up. I don't see the... Uh, I don't see the latest data in terms of the depletion of inflation there at the summit area following this most recent eruption, but uh, we'll check it out tomorrow. Either way, things are ramped back up. Uh, let's see here. This update was put out this morning, but they, the USGS there put out on their social media. I don't know why they haven't updated this, but uh, they put out that the... Um, eruption there at the Kilauea volcano has resumed and uh, instead of just that little bit of uh, free flow of magma up to the surface it was a little little fountaining going on there pretty nice uh, flows there for a little bit so we'll get more data on that uh, throughout the night and check back in tomorrow morning uh, let's see if anything else is going on here across the uh, globe. South America, pretty quiet. Only a couple twos and threes down there in their typical earthquake activity. Still seeing a swarm of movement out there across Ethiopia. Got a uh, pretty good amount of earthquake activity out here in the last seven days with about 10 earthquakes of various magnitudes, mostly in the upper four range or so across the uh, Great Rift Valley. A little uncertain on if, if this is... Um, related to any type of volcano activity here soon but uh gotta watch that it's more on a broad spell a broad spell uh wait, what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> i'm tired about ready to call call it uh bedtime the grand scheme of things here you know due to the rift boundary out here that's uh 
think it's just related to that. Some volcanic activity out here, uh, or at least on the map in the Great Valley Rift Zone. Quite a few volcanoes out there all over the place. All right, uh, aside from that, uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Mediterranean area is pretty quiet, aside from some twos, which is very common. A couple fours down here across the area of, um, this is going to be the Pacific and the Cocos Plate. A very small plate that extends right about here in this little fashion, ex extending up here as well. Got a swarm of fours going on there. Nothing showing up there on the USGS map in that area, but that is happening. So with that, along with the swarming activity there in Southern California, that would make sense here to watch areas northward. There's not a whole lot of migration yet, but uh, I could see things kick up here soon in the Southern California area. As far as any major flaring going on here, we do have a number of sunspots out here still. Uh, nothing big going on yet. Quite a few uh, active regions out here on the visible disk of the sun with an overall threat there for a 20% chance for an X flare. So things have bumped up a little bit. 70% uh, chance for M flare and C flare at 99% chance. No major roars there in the forecast for now. Uh, Storm Prediction Center. Well, we got a big time severe weather day here for... Almost the end of 2024, a huge, look at this, huge hatched area. Uh, we seen this yesterday down here in Texas, right? And they had some big tornadoes. I think da uh, uh, damage was limited, far as I know, but uh, they had a number of tornadoes out there. This is a broader area and still a 10% hatched area for tomorrow. It's going to be for Saturday here. Uh, for an EF2 to an EF5, which is the highest tornado rating out there tomorrow. So if you're within that region, uh, got to stay on guard. This is no joke. This is a, could be a tornado outbreak. I don't like to use that word because anything can happen. You can have uh, the wrong dynamics out here to where it turns out to be uh, a, a fluke, so to speak, which would probably be in the best interest out here, right? Uh, but there is the ingredients that could produce a major severe weather outbreak here across this region tomorrow. That includes, includes uh, Baton Rouge, Jackson, Mississippi, uh, extreme eastern portion here of Texas. But that 5% zone extends further out towards the Houston area. Uh, so anywhere, anywhere out here tomorrow, you need to be on guard. That covers a huge amount of population. If you add all these together here, you got uh, uh, quite a bit a number of states out there being affected tomorrow. Uh, wind, some big time wind from these thunderstorms and also some, some hail out there. So it's going to be one of those days if you're off work, home with the family, if you're watching TV or whatever you're doing, interacting uh, with the family there, make sure you keep your weather radio handy and make sure you have your alerts on your phone turned on so you can get notified when the severe weather uh, comes into the area. No joke tomorrow. And, of course, that's minimal right now, but that will ramp up, as you can see there on the model. Quite a bit of rainfall being uh, produced out there as well with that system there tomorrow. Uh, Northern California, a little bit of rain coming in. It looks like our next decent rainmaker here is going to be this weekend, Saturday night into Sunday. After that, we got uh, we got this high pressure building in across the west, and uh, it's going to keep... I'm hoping it changes, but it looks like it's going to keep a lot of the storms north or offshore. Um, either way, things are looking quite interesting here as we head into uh, deeper into January. Uh, January 8th, January 9th, a lot of cold air coming down. That could create some more severe weather patterns out here across these areas that are already dealing with it. Uh, California looks a little dry there. I'm not liking that setup. But hopefully things will change. I'll take a look here. Um, go back out. So this goes to about January 2nd here. Oh, 
man, that, look at that high pressure ridging out here. That is not cool. That uh, can make for a very bad winter in terms of bad, meaning no rainfall. You know, a lot of people use that terminology bad as in severe weather or rainfall in general. But, yeah, that's not good. Hopefully that gets out of here. Uh, in a scenario like this, most of the time that colder air drips uh, dips down here into the eastern portion of the country. Severe weather threats, keeping the west coast dry. Get out of here, high pressure. Come on. That is not cool. So I'm going to keep checking back on that. I mean, things are going to change, hopefully. Uh, in the meantime, folks, have yourself a wonderful Friday evening. A little spike of an earthquake on Petrolia. A couple of earthquakes there on China Lake. There's some small, very small, spiky earthquake activity showing up. And, and that in itself is, you know, probably below a 1.0 but it's still earthquake activity that's why i like to run these seismograph stations here to keep an eye on it because there's always earthquake activity occurring but nothing being reported you know for these little quakes so we'll see what happens overnight um latest earthquake here 4.5 across the java trench that's fairly new and away from our major area today or i'd say our major area because this is where it's been happening at far as elevated earthquake activity um yeah it's kind of an odd earthquake there away from that main event could watch this area potentially for some migration of that pressure across the area but i think uh the main area right now needs to be watched here a lot happening and the general strain out here if you think about it uh, the western, uh, the Pacific Plate here, moving off to the northwest, uh, the Eurasia Plate and whatnot, heading off to the southeast. That you know creates this huge crunch zone here, and that that has to be doing something to this area right here. So we'll check back in the in the morning, folks. Um, have yourself a good Friday evening, probably Saturday morning for some. Stay safe if you're out there in the south uh, tomorrow for the severe weather. That's that's you know. It, can happen at any time right any time of the year so just got to be prepared and make sure you have some type of plan you know it's it it really sucks to hear you know when severe weather goes through and there's unfortunate you know major damage and whatnot hopefully everything tomorrow just comes to a complete you know lack of ingredients but at the same time can't ignore the warnings out there with this uh, threat like these folks are going to see tomorrow all right, have a good one. We'll catch you guys out here in the morning for the Saturday morning update. Take care, folks, and stay safe.